أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعض. anytime a khatib comes to this masjid or any masjid, Mecca, Medina, Beit al Maqdis, he's always trying to figure out what would be the most appropriate issue to advise the community with. And some people know what they're doing and some people don't know what they're doing, but it's always a challenge, especially if it's a guest khatib. The guest khatib many times is out of his comfort zone because he's not with his community. But since the masajid, they belong to Allah, every masjid belongs to every single Muslim. So you can't really say that he is a stranger or a dhaif in any masjid. Every masjid belongs to every single Muslim. So one of the important topics that can always be dealt with is the mentioning of the Dajjal and the danger of a Dajjal, especially during the time that we're living in and the way we are as people. And the fact that the Prophet mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna min ashrat al-sa'ati an la yuthkar al-dajjal ala al-manabir from the signs that yawm al-qiyamah are close is that the imams, the khutaba they won't mention the Dajjal from the masjid and he needs to be mentioned. Another issue is even more severe than the Dajjal, more dangerous than the Dajjal. The Dajjal is like a muqaddam to the next issue. It's even more important. So if the khatib came out and he wanted to talk about the danger of his shirk and how many people have fallen into it, like the hadith of Mahmud ibn Labid, may Allah be pleased with him. The Nabi, he mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhwafu ma khafu alaykum min al-shirk al-asghar. I fear for you people more than anything else showing off. And the society that we're living in is a society where it encourages everybody to show off. And that was the fear that the Prophet had with those awliya, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and the rest of them. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taqumu sa'atu hatta talhaqa. قبائل من العرب بالمشركين يوم القيامة will not be established until a group of Arabs start behaving like the Mushrikeen. They become like the Mushrikeen. He called them Arabs. Some of the scholars said the Arabs here is a Rams. It means the Muslims. Until some Muslims become like Mushrikeen. And a shirk is muntashir in this ummah. The ummah of a tawheed, many of us, many of our brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, our community, the tawa'if of the Muslims. They make shirk. Meaning, some of the ulama said, the Arab in this hadith, it means the Arab, min dun al ajin that there will be some Arabs, people who their lisan is the Quran, and they should know better than everybody else because this is, this is their language. And yet, despite that, they'll become like the mushrikeen. So if the khatib came and he warned the people about the evil of a shirk and everything that goes against a tawheed, Magic is prevalent in our community. Soothsayers, prevalent in our community. Al-istighatha bi ghayrillah. Al-khawf, ghayrullah. Judging by other than what Allah revealed. So if the khatib came out and he talked about issues of his shirk, al-sabr wa ajada wa afada. But I want to talk about something just as important. Because from the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is when things used to happen, the hawadith, things used to happen, he would mention those things to the community, giving nasiha, warning them, encouraging them, giving them tawjih and irshad. Bits al khatib, he's a terrible khatib. That guy that gets on the mimbar and he's speaking a language, the physical, actual language that the people don't understand. Our children don't know what in the world is this guy talking about because the actual language he's talking about, they can't relate. The language, Urdu, Somalia, Arabic, all of those languages are nice, but our kids don't know what you're talking about. Or he's speaking a language meaning in a way that the people can't comprehend. He's in a wad, he's in a valley, 
and the people in something else. And I've seen this with my own eyes. The khatib comes out and he starts talking about a khutbah that was written about Harun al-Rashid. Harun al-Rashid died in the 1800s. Here we are living now and you're telling us Harun al-Rashid, a khutbah that has nothing to do with us. So what I want to discuss with you brothers and sisters today is a serious issue facing our community. From the hawadith that happened recently is the burning of our Muslim brother from Jordan, the pilot. Rahimahullahu ta'ala wa ghafarallahu ta'ala lahu wa lana wa askanahu allahu ta'ala fasih jannatihi The man was shot down, he was caught as a prisoner by Daesh, ISIS. And he was burnt recently, burnt for everybody to see. Now, I've seen myself, I've seen people burnt on the internet. There were some Hindu women who were cursing Islam, talking bad about Islam, and they were up on a tower in India. And the type of material that the women were wearing, the sari, is made out of material that's real khafif, very flammable. Somehow, some way, the lady's material, her dress, caught on fire and she burnt to death. I saw that with my own eyes. It was horrific. And although she was cursing Islam, Allah ta'ala aghzaha, although she was cursing Islam, no one likes to see something like that. The fitra goes against it. The fitra of Bani Adam, the way Allah created everybody. If his fitra is salim, salima, and he sees someone being burnt to death, he's going to say, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. He's not going to rejoice at that. So concerning this particular issue, there was a time that many people from our community in Europe, in Canada, all over the place because of the lack of knowledge of our religion, many people were not sure about Daesh, ISIS. Many Muslims thought that these people were about the Khilafah and the Khalifa and Nusr al-Din and Intishar of al-Islam and al-Izz al-Itizaz. Many people thought that. And as a result of that, some of our youngsters who have their whole lives in front of them, they threw their lives away and they traveled. The girl would travel without the knowledge of her parents and she would get married. She would be married off without her wali, without his knowledge, not to mention his permission. So there were many people who thought that this group of individuals were a group of people who were really trying to practice Islam. And that's because Muslims, they looked at the issue from one angle and they had the right to look at it from that angle. And the angle is, we do not like Bashar Asad. La Basharahullah bi khayyom qiyamah. He's a kafir, he's a mulhid. He's aduullah and adu to the Muslims in this deen. So the Muslim doesn't like that. As a result of that, if there arises a group of people and they say, we want to fight this guy, we want to make intiqam, we want to make the izal of this person, we understand that. So from that angle, Muslims supported Daesh. But they didn't look from other very important points. And that's one of the problems with our ummah today. It's not enough for you or me to look just from one angle. Knowledge is not like that. Any person in this masjid right now, if I looked at you from one point, if you looked at me from one angle, and then we give a judgment, we're not going to be fair in our assessments. There are many angles. Many points. Why did he do it? What was his situation? What is his level of understanding? What happened? What is the khalfiyat? What are all the issues? You have to look at every point. So there are many points that people with knowledge, when they look at Daesh, they say, nope, these people are not okay because they don't have ulama with them and because many other issues. But the point I want to make here is after the burning of this pilot, our brother Mu'adh, ghafar Allahu lahu, after the burning of this man I don't think that there's any Muslim who is aqil I don't think there's any Muslim who is intelligent who can come and say this is Islam and if someone says that after seeing what happened something is wrong with you something is wrong with you you are extremely jahil, you're mutahamis, you have ghulu, your hatred for Bashar, 
your understanding of Islam is whacked and warped and you need to get your head checked especially when we look at the way he was burnt you know as I told you about the ladies from India the footage just showed what happened and it was horrific but Daesh has taken it to another level when they kill people now like this burning this tahriq of a Bani Adam a Muslim you know what they did you see that camera right there they had a camera 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 there and they're taking a picture of it from different angles after the man is burnt to death they edit all of the picture they make an ashid going on while the thing is taking place and they make it like a Hollywood production so that the one who looks at it it's as if he's going to go to Abu Huraira Khalid ibn Walid Green Lane Masjid it's like a mu'tamar, a conference. When people want to have a conference, they make those trailers, productions, editing the trailer to encourage people to come. And I sheet in the background, different footage, different angle, and that's how it's being made, as if it is Hollywood or Bollywood. So I don't know how many of you people saw the video, but I know, I know some people saw it because the world has become a village, a village due to the internet. I saw it. And the women that I'm connected to, I said to them, can you believe that? They couldn't watch it. Once they know what it's about, the average normal person, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. And yet there are still some people from our ummah who are saying, this is okay. This is our religion. What's wrong with you? So today's khutbah is not for Daesh. It's not for the person who is, you know, in Somalia and they support this stuff in Nigeria, these people all over the place doing craziness. This khutbah today, Ikhwani, is a tahdir. It's a warning for the person who's sitting right here today, who somehow, some way, is still thinking that ISIS is okay. ISIS is a crisis. ISIS is a problem. And every father, every mother here, every adult here, you have to sit your child down and see what's going on in his mind. But even before the child, you have to check your own situation. You have to check your own situation. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us of this time in which we're living. And he told the Prophet, he told his companion Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that during the end of time there was going to be a lot of haraj. Haraj. They said, what is haraj, Ya Rasulullah? He said, qatl. People are going to be killing people. A person will kill his cousin. A person will kill people. The murderer doesn't know why he murdered. And the one who was murdered doesn't know why he was murdered. Just random killing like what happens in Toronto. The companions say, Ya Rasulullah, aha'ula'i, hal ma'ahum uquluhum yawma idhin. The people who do all this murdering close to Yom al qiyamah would they have their minds, drone missiles that non-Muslims kill indiscriminately, innocent Muslims, and then turn around and want to blame moderate Muslims? You're the problem. No, your foreign policy is the problem. Take some responsibility for your foreign policy. So, Benny Adam, they all, have something to do with the rampant killing. They said, will the people have their minds doing that thing? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tunza'u, Tunza'u, Okulu, Murdham, and Nas, Yom, Even. Most of the people doing that time, they won't have their minds. They'll be Majaneen. Most of the people are Majaneen. Some kind of mental problem is afflicting most of the people right now. Anxiety, split personality, some more serious and others less, but most of the people right now, stress, hum, gum, most of the people right now have mental problems. As it relates to burning that man, our brother Mu'adh, a'adhuhullahu ta'ala min adhab al-qabr wa min nari jahannam. First thing that shows us this is not permissible in our religion, first thing, is what happened with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jabir bin Abdullahi radiyallahu anhuma said that the Prophet passed by a himar, a himar, a donkey. And usually you'll find, because of the sensitivities of the Arabs, usually you'll find the speaker, the sheikh, especially if he's Arab, he'll say akramakullah when he mentions the name himar. Because the, the donkey, the donkey in our religion, in our culture, is a problem. Inna ankar aswat la sawtul hamir. The worst voice is the voice of a donkey. That's what Allah said in the Quran. When uh, 
donkey starts braying, making that noise, the prophet said he saw a shaitan. So he has a bad position in our religion. If you said to an Arab man, you a donkey, here, those are fighting words. You don't mean he's a real donkey, but that's an insult. The prophet passed by this animal, a himan, akramakumullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And someone, someone had put al-wasm on the himar. They branded the himar, the donkey. His name is Ghulayb Abdullah. So he wants to show that this himar belongs to me. So he puts ghain and ain on this side of the face, that side of the face, this side of the body, that side of the body, the hind quarters. He put his mark. He burnt it inside of him. When the prophet saw that, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La'anallah, La'anallah, Ladi Wasamahu. May Allah curse the person who branded this donkey. What about a human being? You burn him all up. Allah said in the Quran, Laqad karram Allahu bani Adam. Allah has honored bani Adam, all of them, even the kuffar. There was a Muslim man who had a fight with a non-Muslim, a Yahudi, and he punched him in his face. The Muslim punched him right in his face. The Yahudi went to the Nabi and he complained. The Prophet came out to the people and he said to all of the Muslims, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La tadribu fil wujuh, finnallaha khalaqa Adam ala suratihi. Don't punch another human being in his face because Allah created everybody in the image of Adam. So respect to Adam, respect to the human being. Allah honored Adam, who's the father of, uh, father of all of Bani Adam. You cannot burn a human being if you clearly can't burn a donkey. A donkey. Look what happened. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam defended the rights of a dead donkey. A dead donkey. And here the Muslims come right now and say, this jihad, this is the khalifa, this is the khilafa. And someone in our organization, our masjid said, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Because he's looking at the angle, the issue from one angle. Bashar, I don't like Bashar. Look what the non-Muslims did to us. No, there are other angles in our religion. What makes this something that's haram? And it leaves no doubt in the mind of any aqil. And if you don't understand this, something's wrong with your aqil. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a tremendous hadith that Al-Imam al nawi put in his book, 40 hadith of Al-Imam al nawi And the vast majority of you heard that hadith and that book, that book, you heard of it. That book is in your homes. It's from the Jawami' al-Kalim. He brought those hadith that were from the Jawami' al-Kalim, those tremendous hadith that the Prophet mentioned. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha kataba alaykum al-ihsan. فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَحْسِنُوا الْقِتْلَى وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَحْسِنُوا الْذِبْحَى وَلِيُحِدَّ أَحَدُكُمْ شَفْرَتُهُ وَلِيُرِيحْ ذَبِيحَةً Allah has written perfection on everything. If you're a student, be the best that you can. If you're a mechanic, don't be a lying mechanic. The man drops his car off, do the job and stop lying. He brought his computer to you to fix it. Don't take advantage of the, 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 the system, the way it is, and you, you, you oppress him. You're going to make salah. Be the best person when you make salah. Do the best that you can, to the best of your ability. He says, so therefore, when you kill, kill well. And when you slaughter, slaughter well. And let each and every one of you sharpen the knife so as to free the animal from suffering. So you can't bring a knife to slaughter an animal in his dull and you're chopping his neck. You can't bring an animal, anam, a khuruf, ghanam, an ibil, al bakara. You can't bring the animal and you're cutting his neck and his babies are watching what you're doing. The babies of the mother or the father, the animal. You can't slaughter him in front of the babies and you cannot chop his head off like that. What about the human being? What about the human being? I have no doubt in my mind that Daesh are from the Khawarij that the Prophet told us about. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Khawarij who have come out all the time during the times of fitin. Last time I was here, I talked about the Munafiqeen. The Munafiqeen are a group of people who, during the time of community development, when the Muslims least need problems, they're the ones who are causing the balbala and the problems. The whole world giving us problems, our ummah. Legislation in Europe, in America, is put in, being put forth, geared at destroying the mind of the Muslim. 
The little Muslim child, your, your kids, my kids, 13, 14, and grade 8, they're being taught sex education and other than that. Legislation being put forward, we don't need any extra drama that's unnecessary. So someone comes and he believes that you can put a human being, not just a Muslim, a human being, in a cage and burn him alive. Who in his, who in his right mind believes that? Even if someone is against Bashar Asad, even if an individual, he doesn't have a lot of knowledge of Islam. Wallahi, our older people, our older people, our older people, 50, 40, 60, 70, our older people. Back 40, 50 years ago in the country where the Muslims come from, maybe he wasn't exposed to a lot of Islam. But at the age of 18, 19, 20, none of them would have even thought about what our children are thinking about doing today with killing people and killing themselves. The problems that are going on. From what, show us, what shows us the impermissibility of what happened in Juani is, clearly, clearly, some of the companions, they saw that there was an ant hole, a, a mound, an ant mound, and they burnt the ants. They burnt them to get rid of the ants. When the prophet came and he saw what happened, he said, who did this? Men harraq hadi. Who, who did it? The companions, they fessed up. They said, we did, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is not permissible for anybody to punish someone else with fire except the Lord of the fire. From the khasais of Allah, Allah has names and attributes. No one's names and attributes are similar to Allah. He does what he wants to do. His names and his attributes, they befit his majesty. Allah is mutakabbir. There's no one who can share with him in that. You can't be mutakabir because of your job, your color, your tribe, where you come from. You are in competition with Allah. Allah is al-khaliq. You're not the, the khaliq. Don't call yourself the king of kings, the sultan of the salatin, because you're in competition with Allah. Mighty and majestic is he. From his khasais, only Allah should punish with the fire. Only Allah. Here comes a group of people who say, Khalifa, Khilafa, Al Wala al Bara, Al Kufar, Kufar, Izzatul Islam. And they compete with Allah with one of the Akhas Khasa Isihi. They burn a human being, not just a regular human being, Abdullah. They burn a Muslim man. Now, I don't know the background of my brother Mu'adh, Ghafar Allahu Lahu Walana, Wa Askanahu Allahu Ta'ala fi Jannati al Fasiha. I don't know. I want my son to be a pilot. My son, Thabit. Athbatuhullah al-Islam was sunnah. He wants to be a pilot. Okay, I want you to be a pilot, but try not to be a pilot in the government of any of these people. Try to be a pilot in one of these commercial airlines who take people to and fro, let them visit their relatives, and so forth and so on. I don't know what Mu'ad's situation was, but before I can judge his situation, I have to say he's a Muslim, mother and father a Muslim, comes from the country of the Muslims, and therefore it's not permissible for you to burn him or other than that individual. Now there are a lot of ahadith in Khwani a lot. I don't have time to deal with all of that. Some of the companions, they were traveling. There was a man who did a lot of evil to the Muslims. The Prophet told a group of the companions, when you travel out, if you find so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, I want you to burn him because he did so much bad. Allah Ta'ala sent Jibreel to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't, don't tell him that. He called him back. He said, hey, I told you to burn him. I'm telling you now, don't burn him because no one should use the fire to torture except the Lord of the fire. The Lord of the fire. Now, ikhwani fillah, ikhwani. This is a tahdir. This is a warning. This is a warning. There were people a year ago, more than a year ago, six months ago, they had enough knowledge to know these people are a problem. These people have all of the characteristics that the Prophet described the Khawarij with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يَقْتُلُونَ أَهْلَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَيَدْعُونَ أَهْلَ الْأَوْثَانِ They kill the people of Islam and they leave the people who worship Awthan. Nam. Some, some, some non-Muslims have been killed by Daesh. Some. But the vast majority of people who have been killed were Muslims and continue to be Muslims. 
and the Khawarij have always historically done the bidding of the enemies of Al Islam. Don't let anybody sit in this audience. And someone sits in this audience and he understands what I'm saying is, I'm against the, khil the Khalifa and Al Khilafa, and I don't know what Wal Wal Bara. Don't, don't understand that. That's a different issue altogether. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala ali wa sallam brought a religion. He brought a religion that does not sanction or condone that drama. And if anybody has a problem comprehending that, yeah, you need to check your understanding of the deen of Allah. You need to take it easy. So with that being the case, I want to take this time out to speak to the reverse specifically. But everybody is included here in this country, in Canada. There was a revert who got involved in that thing that happened in Quebec. There was a revert who did that thing in Ottawa. What? This is not our religion. The revert comes to Islam and he's happy because Islam is life. It shows him the way to live. But that is not enough, the fact that you are happy to be a Muslim. You have to learn about your religion. You know that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his companions, مَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْرَجُوا أَنْ يَلْعَنْ وَالِدَيْهِ A Muslim should not curse his own mother and his father. Don't curse your own mother, don't curse your own father. They said, how would someone do that? Why would someone do that? He said, by cursing someone else's mother and father, you cause that man to curse your mother and the father. The way we behave, we cause people to hate this religion of Al-Islam. Now don't get it twisted, Ummat al-Islam at Abu Huraira. Don't get it mixed up. Don't get it mixed up. I'm pretty vocal about what I believe concerning the foreign policy and the unjust nature of non-Muslims and the Western governments. That's my right to freedom of speech. They should not allow those people to draw our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, although they don't know him. He never did anything to you. Why are you drawing him like that? The point is, the point is, that's one thing. But our standard as Muslims, our standard, Allah holds everybody here to a higher standard. He holds every Muslim to a higher standard than what the Kufar hold themselves to. Don't let someone's oppression towards you cause you to be oppressive. Our brothers and sisters who are in Palestine, the Yahud, the racist, fascist state of Israel, they have made it out, met it out, meted it out, a lot of harm and zoom to the Muslims in Palestine. A lot. Stuff that's in, you can't even imagine it. In Kashmir, the Indians, they did that to the Muslims as well. A lot, a lot. But I don't think that the Khala, al Jews, the old lady in Palestine who lost her son because the Kufar, they knocked down the building and they killed her son. I don't think if you show that video to our Khala in Palestine, she's going to say, Mashallah, Mashallah. She's going to say, you know that boy, Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu, you know that boy? He's the Ibn of my sister or my brother in, my, in the neighboring country of Jordan. Because she's on the fitrah. She's not going to allow what happened to her son to justify what Muslims did to that man. And that's the fitrah that Muslims are on. Until, until, until they become something else and someone else. Until they become something and someone else. Very quickly, Akhwani, I just need two minutes, three at the most, inshallah. Do you know that these people use Dalil from the Quran and the Sunnah to support what they did? And this is why our youngsters need to be careful. When we say Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, we say Quran and Sunnah the way the companions understood it. The Khawarij don't understand the Quran and the Sunnah the way the companions. They think they're better than the companions. And that's why their ajdad killed the companions. And they made takfir of the companions. Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. There's an ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah. The same ayat is in Surah Al-Nahl. What's the ayat? The ayat shows in their minds the permissibility of burning a man alive. Allah Ta'ala mentioned, وَإِنْ آقَبْتُمْ فَآقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا أُقِبْتُمْ بِهِ Yeah, Muslims, listen to this ayat. If you lay siege to the enemy, if you catch them, then lay siege to them the same way they lay siege to you and do to them what they did to you. So they said, you see this ayat? This ayat said to us, do to them what they did to us. That's not the meaning of the ayat. The meaning of the ayat, according to the companions, is if they fight you in the sacred months, fight them back. 
if they fight you in the sacred precincts of Medina, Mecca, fight them back. That's the meaning. They did that to you, do it back to them. Don't say, oh, you killed me in the sacred months, but we can't fight you back in the sacred months or the sacred precincts. Now, my question to the people of Daesh is, these non-Muslims have raped Muslim women, like what happened in Iraq about six years ago on the day of the Eid. Eid al-Adha, a man, a group of, a, a, a group of Marines, they raped a 15-year-old Muslim girl, one after another, and then they killed her. And then they killed her. I mentioned that in this masjid before I remember vividly. They killed her. So now, this is just for the sake of argument. Non-Muslim man, he rapes a Muslim girl. A non-Muslim man rapes a Muslim girl. And in the process, he cuts off her breast, akramakumullah. And then he leaves her there to bleed to death. Now the Muslim takes the ayat that we just mentioned and says, if you lay siege to them, then lay siege to them the way they did to you and do what they did to you. Is anybody in his right mind going to say it's permissible to rape a woman and to do that? Is that Islam? That's the thing about the Khawarij. They are crazy in the way they think. They are crazy. Another delil. One of the greatest ulama of al-Islam is Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah Khwani is a madrasa in this masjid. I'm sure you people heard of Al-Imam Al-Abbani, Ibn Baz, Ibn Uthaymeen. Many of you heard of Yusuf Qardawi. These four people, these four people, they cannot be compared to Ibn Taymiyyah. There's no comparison, no makarana, no makarana. To make a comp comparison in his vul, this man was a madrasa. From those people who he taught, Ibn Kathir, one of the best tafsirs in Al-Islam. And he wrote a book called Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya. Those of you who know Arabic, go read that book and see what he said about the Khawarij. Over history, Ibn Kathir. From Ibn Taymiyyah's students, Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, Ibn Daqiq Al-Eid, Al-Mizzi. Wallahi, I wish I had time to tell you. Al-Mizzi, he wrote all of the tarajim. Every narrator in the Kutub al-Sitta, he wrote who he took from and who took from him and then gave a ruling. He's thiqa, he's da'if, he's suduq. That's more people in this masjid. Tens of thousands of people. He was, he was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah. From his students is a man called Ibn Muflih. Ibn Taymiyyah used to say, you're not Ibn Muflih. Bel, enter Muflih. You're Muflih. This man wrote a book called Al-Adab al Sharia. Inside of it, it tells us how to do Juma, how to dress, how to get married, everything you know. And he talked about burning people. They use what Ibn Taymiyyah said. Listen to this. Daesh used something that Ibn Taymiyyah wrote. He was talking about a question that was presented to him. And the question was, what is the ruling if the Muslims get an enemy, an enemy, and they kill him? He's dead. What is the ruling to mutilate him in order to pump fear in the hearts and the minds of the kuffar? When they come and they see the man has been he's mutilated. Ears, nose, eyes gouged out, and the non Muslims see it, and it's gonna make them afraid. Is that permissible? And he wrote some kalam. Generally speaking, he said it's not permissible. It's not permissible, but he wrote some other kalam. They use that as a delil to burn a Muslim man alive, to burn a person alive. This issue he's talking about is one thing, and this issue over here is a totally different, opposite in situation. And that's one of the big problems with the Khawarij. They have their own understanding. They have their own understanding. So the call here, the call here is to encourage every member of this community. Every member. Someone sits up, stands up, and we hear that voice coming from him. That voice that suggests he supports this stuff. Collectively, we have to make that guy uncomfortable with being here. He has to be uncomfortable because that calam is not okay. And don't let people in your homes who believe that. And don't let people around your kids who believe that. And make sure that you're checking the minds of your children. What are they understanding about Daesh and other than that? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nas'alallaha ta'ala tawbih at tawfiq wa sadad wal hidayah. Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam, ala rasulillah, ikhwani, I know I went five minutes over time and you guys really don't go that far over time. But that's shaitan, you know, he's in the mix and I know you have to get back to work, but this is a serious issue right here.
Prophet told his companions and he told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he arranged those people to go make jihad. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa qatilu man kafara billahi wa la taghlaw wa la taghdaru wa la tamathilu wa la taqtiru walidan Hey, you people go out, spread Islam, make jihad and kill those people who don't believe in Allah in a way that is understood. He said and do not go overboard and do not have ghadr. Don't have ghadr. Ghadr is, when I say to this man, I'm going to protect you. When they come to our countries, there's a non-Muslim, he's a mustatmin, a mustatmin. He's with the Muslims and the Muslims are fighting. The non-Muslim who's in the country, you can't harm him. Anyone who harms him, Yom Al-Qiyami won't smell the fragrance in paradise. Al-Ghadr. Ghadr is when you cheat. You make al khida They had already killed the man. Muadh was killed already and they were negotiating with the Jordanian government a switch with hostages and the man was already dead but look the oppressive government the Jordanians they know how they are they said prove that the man is living they couldn't prove it so then they showed the world what had happened that's the Tao of the Daesh. so I want to make it loud and clear no one misunderstands be careful of this particular Tao Yomu Qiyama the uh, people who are spreading this type of fitting facade, there's a big price to pay, and we don't want to be a part of that program. May Allah help us to be of those people who are truthful in word and deed, establish us upon the kitab and the tawheed, and bring this ummah back to our uqul, and protect our shabab, the boys from them and the girls from them. May Allah Ta'ala help us to understand this religion and to understand that our religion is a religion of Rahmah. At the same time, it's a religion of Izzah. And the one who has knowledge is able to put everything in a proper place. I want to apologize for going 10 minutes over, 7 minutes over. May Allah put it in your mizan of hasanat for your sabr and your husn istima. Aqim salat yarhamakumullah.